Welcome to this episode of TAC Tick Talk, in which we talk about hamstring injury. I'm your host, Dr. Joe Bush, editor of the American Chiropractor Magazine, and Jacqueline Toussard, publisher of the American Chiropractor, joins me as we talk with Dr. Jeffrey Tucker on hamstring injury. Dr. Tucker explains some of the things that he didn't get to share in the article on hamstring injury part two, diagnosis and combo therapy approach. Of course, this is a three-part series that began in August of 2022, so look for this in your mailbox the American Chiropractor Magazine. Of course, Dr. Tucker, um, welcome to TAC Tick Talk, right? And uh, here we are, Jeff Tucker, who's currently in active practice of the last 25 years, right? Or 30, I'm not sure. 40 plus. Oh my okay, goodness. Okay, so that was an old <laughs> bio, right? So that's why it's good that we didn't go with that one. So you've been in, cur- in active practice for the last 40 years, right? Yes, uh, I graduated so you- chiropractic in 1982. Uh, mm-hmm. And current I'm president a, or, or past president of the ACA Rehab Council? I am the current past president. Uh-huh. I'm still yeah. active with the ACA and the Rehab Council. Wow. And, okay. So, I mean, you're still doing that. Now, you've recently launched, probably a couple of years ago, a podcast as well, Biohacking, Biohacking the Body, correct? Yes. Available through podcast on Apple, Spotify, I imagine, Samsung, all these guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, where are you practicing in LA? So my practice is in the Brentwood area or West Los Angeles. I'm not that far from UCLA. That's actually my hood where I grew up. So I never went too far away. Great. Okay. And now, so you've been writing for the last several issues on hamstring injury. You have a three-part series on hamstring injury as a chiropractor, of course, you know, that's one of those that you get, you're like, oh, low back, is it a low back or not? But you went through, you talked about some orthopedic tests so we could isolate it. You're not the typical chiropractor, right? So, and uh, we kind of covered some of that earlier, but Jacqueline was like three parts for hamstrings, seriously? And I was like, Jack. Okay, yeah, I'm the publisher in the background, but I'm the communications, uh, you know, insider here. Dr. Joe is the chiropractor, and you know that Mm -hmm. the history we have at the American Chiropractor coming from a family of chiropractors. But I mean, every article I look at from a patient standpoint, as well as the publisher standpoint of how relevant is this? You know, I'm like three issues all about hamstring. And I was like, well, I guess it does have a high percentage of case basis. So that's what I always want to know. So I was like, okay, Dr. Tucker, tell us the the relevance here. Three months thinking about hamstrings. <laughs> I've got with 40 year background, those seeing patients, I bet you better, you know, a lot better than I do. <laughs> so it was really interesting. And what prompted that was one of my best friends. Um, we know each other from elementary school. I was always the shortest one in the class. He was always the tallest. I always say that he stole my height. And it, he comes in one day, Jeff, I, I just injured my leg. And he was in a, a doctor's office. He's a, a, he sells medical devices. He's in a doctor's office. His belt loop got stuck on a door as he was going out a door and making a turn. And he knew immediately that he was hurt. So he shows up in the office a few hours later and there was tremendous inflammation in his hamstrings. And this led me to how do I resolve this as quick as possible? You know, an uncomplicated tear, you know, could take a few weeks. It could take much longer in a complicated tear. So there was so much ecchymosis, so much bruising, you know, within a day, tremendous. His whole posterior thigh was involved all the way down to his calf. So of course, you know, I look to mother nature and then everything else that I can do to enhance mother nature and speed up the healing process and help this, you know, person that I just love and care about to be able to resume his normal functions as quickly as possible. So I have a lot of things available to me. You know, I have lasers available. I have shockwave, I have lymphatic drainage, I have Tekar therapy, and my hands, of course, you know, and other tools. So what's the process? How do you stack this? And we got a great outcome with him. It was really impressive. And we did wind up doing an MRI. And that became part of uh, something that I 
was able to use for the Tech R AMA and share. And I thought I should really put this in an article fashion because on the flip side of that acute injury, there are so many patients that do come in with hamstring imbalance. So then I like to go through that process, you know, the visual process and awareness, you know, of people's hamstrings and their posture and the relationship to their hamstring and their pelvis. And I don't think a lot of chiros are really finessing those strings in a sense, those tendons that attach to the ischium that can control the ischium in what we know is a you know, subluxation complex or, you know, oh, PT might yeah. be a little bleak pelvis, right? So this, yeah, this absolutely. is- Absolutely. Yeah. There's, there, there's, you're a unique chiropractor in that regard uh, for two reasons. Well, one, you're using all these different modalities, right? And some of them, which have, you're testing them or, or using, you know, using uh, studies in order to direct that and enhance the testing right. in your clinic. So you're actively doing this and uh developing the science behind it right because you mentioned tech yeah. art but you, you you're doing other stuff too you mentioned even in the article gab hour spray and stretch type yes exercise old school when was the last time you heard about spray and stretch honestly <laughs> exactly yeah. i loved it um right? that's but but it's still relevant right you even mentioned how they changed the molecule that they're using behind it uh so at what point are you integrating i mean you know, a chiropractor, when, when did you do the hamstring MRI, for example? Did you do that right uh, off the gun? Or? Yeah, I think we did that about a, a week and a half into it. And he was coming along, but I wanted to know, like, how severe is this to kind of give me a better sense of what the prognosis is going to be. And I don't have it in front of me. I apologize. I didn't think that we would talk about that. Oh, that's occur. okay. Well, I just came up. That's okay. Uh, but then as we're, as we're going immediately, are you getting into a active rehab? Are you immediately trying to apply things like tech art yeah. therapy? Yeah. So, so good. So I did in, in any of these cases, you know, I ask myself, what do I suspect the depth of the injury may be or the tissue that I'm trying to target? So let's, let's use that, you know, um, you, we might palpate over the hamstrings, uh, the skin, some bogginess or some inflammation. It may be a little bit warm. Uh, you know, it's obviously, you know, there's increased blood flow to that area. You know, the classical signs of inflammation. So I know I have to reduce that as quickly as possible. So uh, in that regard, you know, the patient is still going to probably use, you know, cold therapy at home. I'm probably going to use a little bit of the, the, the um, very light superficial TECAR therapy. You know, this is, uh, people don't really know what this is yet. You know, I, I use the- Well, the explain, that. Can you explain it a little yeah, bit, Jeff. So I that, can, uh, it, it's radio uh, frequency. Um, some doctors may be familiar with the diathermy that we had in the clinics. And it has, a, that's only one part of it. But these radio frequencies, they're, they're high radio frequencies that do increase the metabolism. So the oxygenation and blood flow to the tissues. And I can control the depth. I can go very superficial, you know, if I just want to get the fascia. And then I can also go to the uh, layer of the muscle. And then I can literally go through a bone. So if I have, imagine, you know, a, a patient laying on their stomach, so they're prone on the table, I could put a metal plate on the quads. So they're just laying on it. And then I can use various tools, applicators on the hamstring to, let's say, lavage, you know, to help wash away some of those trapped fluids. And we know that the sooner that that happens, right, we get rid of some of that trapped fluid, then there's more room for new blood flow, new oxygen to come in and all these signaling and messaging, you know, molecules that help the healing process. Is that happening through, through thermal effects or through chemi uh, through uh, electrical, what kind of? Yeah, so it is a radio frequency. So it's the movement of the molecules that creates a thermal sense. So it's a very pleasant sensation to the patients. Um, and the shock wave, you know, if you, have you guys experienced shock wave? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. 
So there's the radio. I'm thinking I have a little bit. There's radio, which is more superficial. Great for breaking up, you know, scar tissue and fibrosis and great to go after your trigger points. If you have any densification in the tissue or adhesions or fibrosis, you know, whatever you want to call it, right? Then that radial shockwave is great, as is the focused. But the focused shockwave is great for really moving trapped fluids, creating, you know, uh, new blood vessels, you know, neoangiogenesis, again, signaling molecules and other molecules, uh, reactivating, you know, the resident stem cells. So there's many things that each of these different modalities can do. I think we're all familiar with the laser, you know, photobiomodulation, what that can do. And that was a game changer for the arthritics, just fantastic. But then some of these other, t- you know, technologies are very complementary. And I, and I don't want to dismiss, I don't want to sound like I'm that guy that just uses modalities because everything I do, you know, from that very first visit is, you know, my postural analysis, check motion, check the fascia. Jeff, through uh, what now are you adjusting patients, manual adjusting? Or are you doing diversified? Or are you doing Thompson drops? So I grew up, uh, you know, getting proficient in two techniques. We had to know di- diversified technique in chiropractic college, right? That was that was number one. And then electively, I loved SOT. And the reason I love sacro occipital technique was. It was the only technique back then, right? Back then that really addressed uh, nutrition as well as some movement and visceral manipulation, which I think is a lost art in our profession. And it's, it's essential. So that was what was like my lure to that. And then, you know, applied kinesiology came along and that was interesting. I learned how to become a good muscle tester through applied kinesiology. Oh, you did, you did that, AK. I didn't know that. I That's did. I really did fun. early on, you know, with, with, uh, oh gosh, was it, it was white and there was another guy. Got good heart. Good heart was around, of course, you know, and he had some SOT background as well. And so those were early influencers. And then my, my clinic uh, director in those days, he was one of two or three people in the entire country that Raymond Nimmo had certified. Do you remember Nimmo? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Nimmo technique. Right? Most students don't know Nimmo or Nimmo technique. And that was you know, one of the early fathers of ischemic compression, right? And fascially thinking. So way back then I was already thinking about the fascia and the muscles and the connections. And that was really, you know, foundational for me. And then over the years, you know, I think that it um, became more of a well-integrated practice. I was always interested in, you know, what can I do to support nutrition. I think, you know, the rehab was a huge piece of my pie, right? Is getting my patients to be able to move and getting them to learn exercises and, you know, ask me what a good exercise is, right? What's a good exercise? Last time I asked you, you ended up getting on the floor and start working out like <laughs> at the Las Vegas seminar. So I don't know if I want to ask you that right would say, now. You know, now it's like, what's the one you're going to do? What's the exercise that your patient is going to do? And so here I am with all of, you know, these years of experience now for different conditions. And I could tell you the ones that patients will do. And you just distill it down, you know, to, to at whatever their injury is. There's probably, you know, my top one, two, or three that I know patients Mm -hmm. will do. But what uh, are they? What are they, Jeff? Let us know. Okay. We could talk about this. This is so good. We could um, really go on. But overall, you know, overall to help get your patients oriented is awareness of their posture. So so we're going to have a Tucker moment. I'm looking you in the eye and you know, I'm there and the patient knows that I'm there and that this is so meaningful. What I'm going to tell you to that patient 
that you're going to need to do this. So it is helping that patient understand short foot, get well rooted, knees soft, pelvis. Most patients need to tuck the tailbone a little bit to get out of anterior pelvic tilt. When you get really picky, maybe one side more than another. Activate that glute, try to stretch those hip flexors. Get the ribs in good position. Don't let the ribs flare. Relax the shoulders. Get the scapula in good position. Get the humeral heads in good position and establish good head alignment. All of that while you're breathing well. And that could be your very first exercise. Holding that position while you're talking, holding that position while we start to get you to walk and move the arms, swing the arms, move into proper hip extension. And then everything can launch from there, from good position. Breathing is, is fundamental. I think everybody talks about breathing, but they make it so complicated. And it's so easy. You know, let's just get you to understand what a, you know, a good belly breath is. Look at yourself in the mirror. Don't let your, you know, clavicles elevate. Don't let the scalenes be overactive. You know, think like a balloon blowing up 360 degrees. And that's essential. And, oh, I have to share with you. So guess, guess what? Qigong. Oh, I, my gosh. Is that, is that I, I love that you yeah. brought that up. So, yes, I did an entire year of, mm-hmm. you know, Qigong. I figured, I, see, I figured we were going through your years how right I there as you're feel. telling me. I'm actually, I'm thinking about like what's next. So I'm going to be to age 65. I'm going to be 65 and I'm thinking, okay, what what's next? And I thought, you know, my 33-year-old my daughter, one of my twins, uh, she's into boxing. I thought that would be fun. That's great cardio. But I, I but I'd, I'd have to tell the instructor, don't hit me in the head. I know too much about concussion <laughs> and I'm worried about my hands. Okay. But, but that may be fun. Okay. And then I thought about, right, what you just said, like maybe go back to, you know, something that has more flow, right? At my age, as we get older, Tai Chi, I chi would, would be, be like great, chi. right? Those are good to balance and, you know, control and breath work. Really, it is important throughout our lives. Mm-hmm. The earlier you get that message, the better. And then, you know, to take that a little bit further, what can we do to help improve a person's gait, you know, is really important. Because walking is still the mother right. of all that. You mentioned that about the short yeah. foot. Yeah. Right. You mentioned that about the short foot. So, uh, you know, for the hamstring patient, right? So how did you, how did you consider the, the feet associated with that and its role in that? Yeah, he, he needed a little bit of um, reawakening. So I gave him some short foot exercises and I gave him some intrinsic exercises. So hopefully most doctors know what those are, but I'm, I'm gonna give you a shortcut because you asked a great question. You know, what are some of the exercises? Okay, so simple one, I, I kid you not. Let me see um, if I can find them for you. Oh yeah, right here. So this bag, can you, can you see what this is? Marbles? Nah, yeah. It's a bag of marbles. So I take out one of my marbles, right? And I put it on the floor, their shoes are off, socks are off. I'm like, okay, pick that up with your feet and put it in your opposite hand. These LA guys. Right? These so LA well, think guys, about it. They're, they're grabbing like this, creating an arch. <laughs> then they have to do hip wow. flexion and rotation yeah, at the femur. And they're standing on one leg. Is that a perfect exercise? No, that's a Can I get my patients exercise. to do that for one or two minutes a day? How, yes. how much do you charge for the money? <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to give them a gift. I go, here, I got you a present, <laughs> especially after they put it on, on their own foot. <laughs> I dropped one on the floor. I like, I like have to go, I have to get it. So a patient doesn't lock in and slip on the marble. Hold on. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah, that would be expensive in LA, I believe. Uh, so, all right. Well, that's great. Now, um, Jeff, is there anything I didn't cover about the hamstring recovery, hamstring article? I mean, they've got 
they got to read the yeah. article. They're going to look for it in the magazine, right? We're online. Uh, they know about your your podcast uh, about the bringing. Yeah, well, look up the AM, the, body, the right? AMA. Ask me anything. Um, uh, events they're really great people are free to okay. you know call me on the phone where will they find uh, that where will they find I'll that have to, i'll have to make sure that that's on my website which is dr jeffrey and it's a, okay. it's a good thing i i think on on there you know i love vetting products so if you're curious about you know a certain product if you're you know thinking mm-hmm. about making these purchases are expensive they're really you know pmf Right. machines, PIMP and, you know, and Shockwave and mm-hmm. you know, back tech car or lymphatic. They're very oh, expensive. They're machines. Yep. I mean, I just had to make a decision mm-hmm. on, on yeah. one, I was testing, you know, one of them, a uh, uh, high, high intensity uh, PIMP. I already have one that's pretty high intensity and I was looking at a new one and I had it in the office for, you know, six or eight weeks and it's really great, but you know, they just want a lot of money. Well, I wanted just to interject really quick because, because that's a subject that honestly that um, we were just, uh, and you mentioned Dr. Joe, you brought up even the Kinas, and I know Zimmer as well, these, you know, high price tag items, which of course, a lot of people who advertise in the magazine have these high ticket mm-hmm. items. But when I was, we were just recently up at our brother, Dr. Rick Bush's clinic, who's helping our father with some health mm-hmm. issues. And they were, you know, using one of these expensive devices like the Kinas and they were talking about the price tag. And I said, but when you hear what it's good for, you're thinking what kind of price you wouldn't put on your health. I'm like, this is ridiculous that we get stopped up. And it was funny because even, uh, and a lot like you, Dr. Tucker, you know, our brother, Dr. Rick up there. And of course, Dr. Joe, who I work with all the time, you know, you come to this different mentality when you go to these seminars and these trade shows all the time, where you start to realize that every single one of these big ticket items will open up an entire new customer patient base and another source of income. I've heard many of these people tell me that within one month's time, the patients that they use who will line up to get treatment on those devices, pay for themselves uh, like that. If, But it, you know what I mean? You have to have that mindset that's yeah. different. Um, I agree. And, you know, obviously you want to make sure the age range for each, you know, doctor, there's going to be different stages you're in and learning th- phases. So it's never right or wrong, but it's just like, to never let the price tag, if, you, if it works, I'm like, seriously, you have no idea how much people are spending going to a lot of other, you got your AMA, I'm sure they're loving you with your ask me anything, but all these other, uh, you know, colleagues in the healthcare industry, they're peddling a lot of things that are no good and a lot of diagnostic things that are through the roof on expenses with no plan for even treatment after that, other than, you know, maybe a pill or a surgery which in its time and place is great, but most people don't need a pillar surgery. They yes, need real help. And, and we are the ones to do that. So there's so much to unpack in what you just said. One, uh, of late, I really applaud our vendors. Whereas before, you know, even just, let's say five or 10 years ago, I would buy an expensive piece of equipment. The sales rep would drop it off in the office, show me a quick demo for an hour, maybe two, and, and that was it. And then I had to go figure it out and figure out the protocols. And that's how I got, you know, to call other doctors that have the product as well. And we really learn from each other. So these, my conversations okay. that are now that, that ask me anything started very organically with a few doctors around the country that had shockwave or that had lasers. And, and that's how mm-hmm. we really learned from each other. And now, you know, we're all willing to share. We want you to do well, but each of these pieces of equipment allow you to have a clinic within your clinic and what what right. the vendors are now doing is emphasizing education and i applaud them i hope i had something mm-hmm. to do with that movement telling them you know it's on you you're not doing enough you're right. not doing enough so mm-hmm. they're really you see good educational programs or certification courses right. for you know shockwave uh for uh, mm-hmm. the, you know laser uh, even for the lymphatic drainage and PIMP and all of these things now, it, it's great. To see mm-hmm. that. I was just going to jump in about, because from a patient's perspective, you're talking about the education, you know, I mean, obviously I've got my publisher hat and my patient hat. I'm like, yes, I go to the trade shows. I get all excited. I want to use it all from a patient's standpoint as well as a publisher standpoint. But if I don't have a doctor over me reminding me why I got to keep taking the supplements 
or retesting me to verify that I still need it or telling me that I got to keep wearing my orthotics, you know, or this or that. I mean, all of these things, you need to have somebody, a doctor who's actually testing you and showing you this is how it's it's helping you. Because if you don't keep that up, no matter what it is, everybody's trying to get their time and their money and they're going to try to sell them something that may be cheaper oh. or faster. And yeah. usually the cheap, fast solutions, I mean, if that's OK as a temporary, I'm not like bad mouthing any of those. You know, even to me, surgery and pills all have their place for sure, but they're not going to the root cause of the problem. And I know yeah. a lot of these modalities you guys are learning and that we get to discover they're being created because they're actually going to the cause of the actual problem and helping diagnose mm -hmm. a little bit better and chiropractors yeah. do better. These, these modalities really do complement chiropractic care and they open up so much. We haven't even had a chance to talk about, you know, fat loss. I have a very, very successful fat loss uh, clinic within my office. And that came about just because I had all these patients coming in that would say, oh, Jeff, you know, my ankle hurts, my knee hurts, my hip hurts, my shoulder hurts, and my neck aches, right? Mm -hmm. You've heard those. And chronic. And I would look at them and, get, and, and do a body composition analysis and go, look, even being 5% over body weight or body fat is causing inflammation. I need you to lose weight. Do you have a strategy? Yes or no. If the answer is yes, I'm like, okay, I'll give you a few weeks to bring it down. If you don't, I have a full-time person I'm going to introduce you to. Mm -hmm. And I want to see if you two are a fit for each other. I used to have to be the one to do, you know, the metagenics, you know, the 30-day the cleanse or the standard process 21-day cleanse and take patients by the hand. And it was just too much for me. You know, they're great programs. But having another person do this for me and coming in every week having a weigh-in, getting checked, organizing their diet, really it, it creates such you know mm -hmm. gamification and, mm -hmm. and such a, a good solid program. And I'm so proud of that, what, what mm -hmm. we do. And then it allows the patient to come back in. Mm -hmm. They're not inflamed anymore. And then I'm right. like, okay, right. now tell me who you really are. Mm -hmm. so, so Jeff, do you do a body composition analysis on everyone or? Absolutely. Is it Oh, Every patient. I, I, think I think that's a component that everyone From a woman's have, standpoint, I'm evaluate. saying if you can address people's aesthetics, you know, both men and women, you're going to get recurring patients. And not only that, I wanted to mention, because I know we're getting close on time, is that as a tick talk, I wanted to make sure, too, because I know that the tick is definitely a lot about the adjusting and basic hardcore chiropractic. So I wanted to make sure to tell us a little bit more just about your adjustment regime analysis, some background, because I don't know if we've adjusted, you know, addressed the tick as much as we probably should every time. Okay. I like that. So we could go back to the, the hamstrings. You know, I had to make sure that his foot function was good, that the knee, you know, he had good, you know, knee mobility, good tracking. And of course, that the hamstrings were firing well. So I had to look well at the pelvis, look well at his thoracolumbar junction, adjusted that area, adjusted his thoracic spines. Uh, his cervicals were off. I, I, you know, this is interesting that you say that. So I think there's a lot of practitioners out there that treat like north, like here, right? Eye doctor, ear doctor, the dentist, you know, ENT, there's so many. And then there's uh, those that treat south. Yeah, all MDs treat south, right? My my domain that I love, that occiput and C1. I love getting in there with a lot of finesse at, and really working that area. So that's like my favorite area to work on to adjust. I always look for an opportunity to adjust, always. I always look at the fascia. I want to make sure that I'm really trying to understand the fascial chains and that everything is connected to everything through that fascia. You know, it's, it's a source of sensory information for the brain. Uh, it's all part of my movement integration with the patients. And that's something, you know, that we could just talk on and on and on about. Um, and I know before we close, I want you to know what I am thinking about. After the hamstring series, right, I immediately started like going, okay, what's next? You always have to have a project, right? You always have to have yes, a goal, absolutely. right? Okay. So pelvic floor, men's and women's, 
health. I was going to mention that when you mentioned men's and women. Men's and women. I didn't want to say anything, but I think with the shock wave, I, I think that's related to pelvic floor. Is that correct? And and absolutely. Well, I've, been, I've, been, I've been doing a Kegel this whole interview, so I'm okay. But <laughs> wait, wait. You want to know something? I'm down on Kegels. <laughs> I'm down on. I, I mean, they're I okay. They're okay, but there's better. See, this is where oh, oh, where I know. I, I know them. you're not supporting but them. I, I see. I, you're I, over I, it. You're they're over okay. it. What you're saying is, I was also I'm doing adductors. I was more. Ad, doing my adductors too. They're so, all fired, so there you go. I love that you say that. That's more exciting to me. So you, they, for our listeners, I hope they come to FCA where we all get to be together. I'm going to be um, part of a headache panel, and I'm going to be part of a women's health panel, and then I get to do my own Jeff Tucker thing for a couple of hours which I'm gonna share what I am doing observationally and some of the exercise and movements that I most commonly use. I'm gonna go through my list of biohacks from A to Z. So I think it's gonna be like really fun and I so look forward to seeing you guys. You, you know, you, you're so instrumental in what you've given to the profession. Your organization, you know, is so remarkable. You're consistently there. I know you're there for the doctors and I get how you're trying to elevate the entire profession. So just thank you so much, really. Oh, thank you, Dr. Tucker. Thank you for your time. Do. I know you're a busy man. Hey, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, all right? Most definitely. Okay. Thank you so Stay much, well. Dev. Bye, you Dr. guys. Dr. Tucker, we'll see you until next time at the MCA. Bye. All right.